my four stones and realized you can make money partying for a living. Um, I did not realize there was money in direct sales, so I really thought it was going to be a scam. Um, so I did, I started and realized, okay, two shows a month brings in a lot of extra because I love to shop. Um, and we had just bought a house and I needed to do a lot of shopping. Um, so I was doing about two shows a month and then my business just started growing. I was doing about four to six shows a month. And then in fall of January 2008, my husband was working his part-time job, which was for a towing business and was out on 85. And a car lost control and hit my husband. So, actually, that wasn't the car accident. I'm going to this today. Um, <laughs> so, he was out of work for, from his full time job for about eight months. Um, so, I was the provider so we could keep our house. So, every time my team comes to my house, I tell them the only reason you're sitting in this house is because of being a child. Um, so, I had to up my business. And the way I did that was. So that's how my business grew so fast, was because I had to help our family out. Um, and I was. I was able to keep our bills paid and our house payment paid every month with teaching full time and doing about 12 shows a month. So you can do it, but you have to get on the phone and book shows. Um, so I was. I was on the phone. I was calling anybody I could, um, telling people that I talked with. I need your help. <laughs> I need you to book shows. And so that's how my business grew was because I needed to become that income. Um, and so I kept doing 12 shows even after he was able to go back to work because after we saw the income that this business could bring in, we realized, you know, this would be nice to eventually have as a full-time job once we're ready to start a family. So in June of 2010, at the end of the school year, I was able to resign from teaching, which was great news for us because two months later, our daughter was born. And so I am now able to stay at home with her and spoil her rotten all day. And I share that at my shows. I make more money now spoiling my daughter all day than I did 25 in one little small classroom. Um, so I just share that with you too before we start because I will tell you, I do not do Pampered Chef 24-7. My business is open 24-7, but I don't work 24-7. Um, a lot of people think I'm probably in my office all day, no, I am chasing a two-year-old all day. Um, so I work in my office around her schedule. So when she naps, that's when I work. And then, um, our girl room can probably tell you, last night, um, I stay up at night sometimes because I, I can't go to sleep after a show. I'm like ready to go. So I go in my office and work an hour or two, not every night, about three nights a week. So I do about two hours a day while she naps, just catching up on emails, emailing my team, doing invitations. And then I do about an hour or two, about three nights a week. So I don't do this business all the time. So it is possible to do it full time. So I just share that with you too. So we're going to start out with sales. And I did have to do notes because I'm going to that track and won't get through it. So, um, so let's see. So I hear a lot of people ask top sellers, how in the world do you sell that much? Um, so I'm going to tie it. We're going to do a little activity before I share with you on how to increase your sales at your shows. So I want you to raise your, actually, no, we're doing uh, this first. So um, take out your catalogs, and I want you to go through your catalog and circle or highlight, whichever you prefer, everything that you take to every show. And I want you to total it up as you go along. So. Every single show, these items are the ones you always take. They're always in your kit, and I want you to total it up. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that. So what I want you to do now is I want you to raise your hand if your total is $800 or more. $800 or more. You take $800 or more to your shows. Okay? All right. Well, I will tell you I personally take over $800 worth of products to my show. Um, but I talk about $3,000 worth of products at every show. Why? Because if you aren't creating interest in enough products, nobody's going to book the show. And what interests one person 
will not interest enough. So you've got to cover enough products to create interest for people to want to work with you. So I take 800, but I'm still covering $3,000 worth of products. And you'll find out at the very end, that is not the whole capital. <laughs> so let's do a little visual. I'm trying to keep you active for this because I don't want to stand up here and be bored all the time. So stand up if you have the classic animal. All of you are <laughs> Okay, stay standing if you take it to your ship. I would be sitting. Okay. All right. Um, stand if you have the classic battle bowl and the same still mixing bowl. Stand if you have both. Stay standing if you take the stainless steel bowls to every ship. Okay, about half of you sit down. Okay? Alright. So all of you can sit down. So all of you have the batter bowl. How much does the batter bowl cost? How much is the batter bowl? Sixteen dollars now with the new cap. Okay? How much are the stainless steel bowls? Eighty-four fifty. Okay? Yes, I know, the stainless steel bowls are bigger, but they do not weigh more than your classic battle bowl. They're lighter, okay? Well, they will bring you in $68.50 more commission than your classic battle bowl. So why are you taking the battle bowl to your show? I don't want to know what I'm trying to do. Okay, so your battle bowl is heavy. It'll bring you in $16. And it's fragile, you don't want to drop it out of the back. Your stainless steel bowls will bring you in $84.50. Okay. okay. So that is one item right there that should be there on the show. Now, you're going to hear Nicole in her show do a demo with the stainless steel bowls. And you're going to see why you need them and why they need to be there on the show. 99% of my October shows booked for the stainless steel mixing. 99% of my October shows book the show with me for my single still mix singles. Now, if you don't have them, you need to host your own show <laughs> and make that the top item on your list. So you, this month, you have to have a $650 show. Well, with a $300 show, you can get a half price. They need to be the top item on your list. And you'll see why when she does her show demo. Within two shows, if you haven't sold them, at least to set at a show, we need to talk some. I will tell you, <laughs> Nicole, you'll hear. Oh, I sell a set almost every show, if not for my Okay? Stand up if you've ever made a salad at your show. If you've ever made a salad at your show, stand up. Okay? Stay standing if you took the salad and berry spinner. Okay? Now, I know some of you probably sat down, all of you can sit down now, because you don't have that piece. The salad and berry spinner is another hot ticket item. It's $60, okay? I sell a ton of them. So if you don't have one in December, with a $150 show, you can get it 60% off. Any item in December is 60% off. So if you're going, okay, well, I don't know that I can do $300. Well, in December, wrap up on all these items, but I say before, so that you can book shows for December to tell people, December show, you can have the stainless steel bowls for $33 and some change. So that way it will help you book shows, which we'll talk about here in just a little bit too. But it, the salad and berry spinner is a $60 piece. And I can talk about it at a show, but that is one item that doesn't sell unless you see it. There are a couple items that don't sell unless you see it. Well, that thing goes over 32 miles per hour, so I tell people NASCAR has nothing on me for show. If it's got brakes, then it's got to go. Um, so that is another item that I take to every show that I do a salad. And people are amazed that I get a half a cup of water almost every, off every head of lettuce. And I'm not going to tell any more about that thing because Nicole's got you covered today with the show that I'm so. Um, so with me saying that, I'm sure you think I take a ton of products to my show. No, I am my host home within one to two trips for my car. Now I will admit, I do not carry less sell more, like Pamper Chef is down with their little tote bag. But I do, however, carry smarter, sell lots. So think about that. Carry smarter, sell lots. And you're 
your demo, or the example with the batter ball and the stainless steel ball. This is just one example. There's <laughs> But along with carrying these items, you have to create interest. So if I were to show you all of our things. Okay. Now if I were to just show you the salad choppers, then the crow would Okay. I have a ton of scissors at home. I have kitchen shears, I have regular scissors, I have pruning shears, you know all this. Okay. I don't need another pair of scissors at home, do you? But when I open these up, we'll tell you, okay, they lock in the bottom, great for chopping salad, chopping up meat, they have a lifetime warranty, they can go in the top rack of your dishwasher, they don't clean. Anything happens to them, pay for check or replace them. So, so you have to create the interest, but you also have to know about the product. So I will tell you, I have done 649 shows. I have sold over 800 of these. It's my, it's my number. You can do a search on P3 to find out what's the top selling item. This is my number one item I sell. Because I talk about it and create a with it. Sorry, I put your style choppers back. Okay. Um, okay, so you'll get to see those in her demo too. but. That I created ton of interest on those, and I have people call me at Christmas. I've already had one lady order eight for all the stockings in the this year. So um, you got to create interest for those. Um, we have to educate ourselves on our products, and I do not know everything about every item in our catalog. But my goal is to pick up tips at every meeting and training that I go to. Plus, I use the products a lot. And I do my own research online, trying to compare our products to others, listening to other consultants. There's a ton of YouTube videos of consultants. So if there's a product that you want a little more information about, let's say the throw pan. There are countless YouTube videos on her throw pan. Go to YouTube and just take 10 minutes you know, a week and educate yourself on some of our products from other you know, consultants out there. I know that if you go to our team page that Anita has um, there's a demo of me doing the food chopper. The whole stainless steel bowl demo is out there. So there's a lot of ways to, you know, um, so we do have to educate ourselves on our products. You also can use the catalog to showcase the products so that you don't have to take them all the products to every ship. So I will tell you how I do my catalog. This is my catalog that I take to every ship. And I have it tabbed so that I can use it during my show demo. Because I do not take the knife block to every show, but I talk about the knives. So I have it marked. There it is. So it's cutlery, and it's tabbed. So I can go right to my cutlery tab and say, okay, if you'll turn with me to page 52 and 53, and then I go into talking about our cutlery. So I'm not carrying everything, but this is over $400 and some dollars worth of products that I cover right there. And then you can say, go to your cookware page. I mean, our cookware is like $1,500 worth of stuff that you can talk about right there at your show. And I talk about all three lines. And then I also have it tabbed, the pink ones are charitable giving pages, because I cover that at the beginning of my show, talking about how they can help us with the American Cancer Society and for Feeding America. So if you haven't done this, I train my team on this at the beginning of every season, and we go through and tab like the big section. So I have like cookware, bamboo, um, the cutlery and the stoneware, um, and then our seasoning mixes too. So, let's see. All right. So now you are probably thinking that this is half the book that I talked about. But does anybody know how much it were? How much my total would be if I ordered one of everything in the catalog from you, except the gift sets, and except for the items? already in set. So like I wouldn't order another 10 inch skillet because it's already in the cookware set. Does anybody have a guess of how much my total would be if I ordered one of everything from you in the catalog? $25,000. Yeah. 8000 
$3,000 worth of stuff at your shows. So I'm not asking you to cover the half the catalog. I'm going to ask you to cover a third of it. So $11,822 worth of products that we have to share about at our show. I was amazed at that myself, so that's why I did it too. All right. So let's see. All right. Another reason that I feel my business is where it is today is because I set goals. And I am a huge goal-oriented person. So raise your hand if you set a weekly goal for yourself. A weekly goal. Okay. Raise your hand if you set a monthly goal for yourself. Okay. Raise your hand if you set a long-term goal for yourself. Okay. So I see a lot of hands down. I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for my goals and me going after them and meeting them. So I'm going to share some examples of what my weekly, monthly, and yearly goals are, and we'll go back and talk about a couple of them. So a weekly goal, I have a goal of every week I'm going to do a specific number of shows. I make at least four. So if you want a successful business, you have to be earning the monthly Pampered Chef promotions by doing at least two shows a month. So stand up again if you earn the bracelet with two shows in September. Yay! So if you want to do two shows a month and you book three to four and nobody cancels and you end up with four shows, not only do you earn free stuff, but you earn more right? So it would be a great month. So that's what I tell my team. If you want two shows, book three to four, the worst that can happen is you have to have some more money. So raise your hand if your business is exactly where you want it. Okay, good. All right. Um, raise your hand if you make three contacts every single day. Okay. So majority of you do not raise your hand that your business is right where you want it. So we're going to talk about, a little bit about that now. So I tell my team, if you can't make three contacts a day, make it your goal to make 21 contacts a week. And to me, that sounds simpler. You tell me to get on the phone and call three people today, you have it all show money because I hate the bulk. Um, now, if you tell me to do 21 contacts in a week, I don't know why that sounds so much simpler to me. Yes, I know. It's still three contacts a day. I'm very well aware of that. But <laughs> 21 contacts a week. But then you have to keep up with that. You have to find a way to record it so that you make sure you're making 21 contacts a week. And remember, when you're at a show, if seven people are there, that is seven contacts per week. And a lot of people don't think about that. So I had a show this week, you know, there were 10 people there, but I still haven't done my 21 contacts. And you only have 11 left now, because you made 10 live contacts, even if you're a book. You got 10 no's, you need 10 yeses now. Um, I also tell my team that if your business isn't where you want it, yeah, if you yeah, and you want more than the above, you know, you want a little above average than what the business says. Um, so I, when I listed out my weekly goals a minute ago, I said that I make 40 contacts a week. Well, the business says three contacts, or paper chest says three contacts a day, which would amount for 21 contacts. So I do 40. And I meet that goal every single week, unless I'm on vacation. So, you are not going to have a business without contacting people. But if you want more from your business, you need to go above average. So instead of 21, you can And I'm not saying you have to continue that. You just continue that to get your business to where you want it. Now, I will tell you, I hate to call people. I hate the phone unless it's a benefit. Um, so... My breakthrough quote for this business when I started was someone said, Hannah, if you're not calling them, someone else is. So that to me, I said, oh my gosh, they are so bad. And so that was my breakthrough quote. Okay, well, they're going to book with that girl. If I don't call, I'm calling them right now. That was my breakthrough quote when I first, because I do not want to be a salesperson. I do not want to have to call and be that funny person. And my first line when I get someone on the phone is, Hey, Teresa, it's Hannah. You know, she doesn't mind. Am I catching you in a bad time? That is my first question that I always ask. The worst thing I can say is I'll call you back. And I'll say, okay, well, if I haven't heard from you in a day or so, I'll call you back. Um, okay, so I want you to go for no if you're not 
not understanding what I mean by that. Go for no means you're going to hear no. So you've got to go for no when you're making your contacts. And I tell my team, you scream for the yes. So go for the no and scream for the yes. You'll hear no more than you hear yes. But you've got to make those contacts. Your show is getting on the phone. Don't come to me. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about calendar because that helps me meet my weekly and monthly goals too. So let's talk about your calendar just a little bit. Raise your hand if you know your first available date without opening your calendar. Okay, majority of you, good. Now, if you opened your calendar to November, don't do it yet. Raise your hand if you could tell me how many dates you have left to book in less than five seconds. A couple of you. Okay, good. All right. Um, I can do both of those because I'm visual and I make my calendar visual. So we're going to talk about how I do my calendar, and that helps me book each month, too. Now, before I open my calendar, you are not allowed to compare yours to mine <laughs> because I do the number of shows that I need to do for my family and then some. Um, I'm simply showing you how I keep track of my shows, not telling you your calendar needs to look like mine because that's not my goal. Yours needs to look like yours. So I'm going to show you my November and hope nothing falls out of the calendar when I do this. Okay. So, this is my November calendar. So, everywhere you see a blue sticky, sorry, this microphone here, we're going to talk this way. Can y'all hear me? Okay. So, everywhere you see a blue sticky is where I want to show. So, the only blue sticky that is open is Monday, November 19th. I have one show left to look for November and it stands out to me that way. What you oh, these are extra stickies in case uh, I, as Nicole will tell you, I don't say no. Um, <laughs> she said, she calls me, did you say no to that? Um, so, everywhere there's a blue sticky or a yellow one because I ran out blue or whatever, that's where I want to show. So, this is what we're going to do right now is I brought extra stickies. So, if your calendar is not sticky, like mine, and if this is something that would work for you, I want you to grab some stickies. And you're going to do November and December. I want you to put stickies everywhere you want a show. So I'm going to pass the bag around, and there are more than enough. Just take a stack of these and do your count. And so in January of this year, I <coughs> did have my calendar where I wanted. So I sent out personal emails to all of my contacts. Because after I do a show, here's another key thing, I guess, too, is keeping your contacts. So I get my WordPress slips. I put those contacts in my Yahoo account, and I put those contacts in my favorite chef account so that they get my newsletter every month. And let's say January rolls around, or November. Let's just do November because it's the next month. Let's say your November's not where you want it, and you need a lot more shows. I send out an email from my Yahoo account and run a special. And I email it to all of my contacts. And so in January, that's why I did it this year. I just said, book a show with me for one of these January dates. And you can pick one of these products for free. Now, if you're going, I don't have any products to do for free. Depending on what the host special is some months, I'll offer the host special for free. They get to pick one for free instead of 60% off. Do not do that for one month. Um, <laughs> or nine months. But... Um, I've done that, but in January I did, you know, no more than a $40 product. It was items that I had earned in my director kit. Um, and I booked every single one of those dates through an email. Now, I don't rely just on email to book my shows, but the reason I share that with you is because I had about seven dates that I still needed booked. Booked them all through that email that I sent out. But because my January started out strong, that's how every month this year has been able to stay strong. And I look at my calendar, so you have your stickies now, and by October 31st, November is booked. And so I can see how many blank stickies I have, and I do not want to be up at midnight on Halloween calling people to book shows because they're not going to answer if they're going to leave. Um, so I book way before the 31st. But if that's my goal, I need it. And so that's the other thing. When you set weekly, monthly goals, because your long term can take a while to get there, but your weekly and monthly goals, you have to meet them. So when I look at my calendar, I have one day left for November, and it will be booked. 
before October 30th. So you have to make those goals and make sure that you meet them. So that's another reason, I think, to that each month we're ready to go. So questions about the calendar part. I know we're going to do more questions at the end, but we're all around that. Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, so now you have a show. What more do you do? So I'm going to go over what I do and the steps that I do to kind of keep in touch with my hosts. So you need to be in, your, in touch with your hosts about every week until your show. You need to create a friendship with your host so that you aren't just that consultant lady or man. You know that consultant man that came and did my show? Yeah, you want a friendship. So I am Hannah Riley, their consultant and friend. I'm not consultant Hannah Riley, my name is first. So I want them to know me by name, not you know that consultant. We don't want to be that consultant. You want to be who you are first. So I contact my hosts right after they book the show with an email, unless they say I have an email. So you've got to ask at the show or when you book the show, do, what is the best way to communicate with you? So I send an email the day after or the day of that they book their show, and I email to discuss how we are going to do inviting for the show. That's the number one thing we discuss. Are we going to do a Facebook event? Are we going to email invites? Are we going to mail out invitations? I do the inviting for my hosts. Not everybody does that. Again, you are going to do what fits your business. I'm just telling you what works for me. And the reason I send out invitations is when I first started being for chef, someone told me, Hannah, you don't know when invitations go out when you ask the host to do them. But when you do them yourself, you know they go out for me 15 days prior to the show. And then you know you're going to have a show if the invitations go out. If you give it to your host and tell the host to send the invitations, they can tell you they've sent them, but then you get to their house and the invitations are on the counter. You don't have a show. So that's why I send invitations, but you have to do what works for you. So we discuss, okay, how are we going to send them invitations? But I give them a deadline to have me their list by. But I give them no more than two weeks to do that list. And if I don't have a list by that due date, so let's say by October, what's today's day? The 13th. Okay, let's say I told someone to have me their guest list today and I don't have it by the end of today. So on October 14th, I email them and I call them to find out, okay, I didn't hear from you. How's your guest list coming? Just trying to get stuff ready for your show, so I just want to see how your guest list is coming. But if I don't hear from them, let's say they don't email me back, they don't call me back. Within two days, that date's no longer theirs. So, the reason that is, is if you wait around and they never call you back, that show is gone and you don't have a show there to replace it. So if I don't you know, hear back from them, I rebuilt their date. Now, if they call me after that and say, oh, I'm still here, we're on the guest list, I just tell them, I'm so sorry, I didn't hear from you, so that date's no longer available. But I have this Tuesday, da, 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 da. and we just rebuilt their show, and nobody's ever had a problem with it. This rarely happens, but I will tell you, it has happened. Um, and so that's what I do. Don't wait around on those people that don't call you back because you won't have a show. So if you don't call me, I give you a couple days, and then I rebuild the date. So step two, you have the list. So then I send out their host packet. And I go ahead and set them up on my website and email them, at, email them directions on how to access their show on my website. So just to talk a little bit about the show packet, I did bring one. And you may have seen, some of you may be the folders that have the little pockets inside. Well, I find that, you know, I buy a ton of those right when school goes back in and then I run out. So I have started something new because it's just as cheap. I get the little file folders like this. Um, but this Okay, so on the left hand side I do the guest special and then underneath it I do a three part outside order form. You can do whatever type of order forms that you do. I just do this because it's three on a page. And then on this side I do a letter for me and then right here in this colored box are three steps for a successful show. Over inviting, reminding guests, getting 15 or more people at the show. Now I'm going to pass this around so that you can see it. The next page I do is just a little bit of information about the business and some 
samples of my commission checks. The next page is a sheet that I did on my own, but it's ways for them to earn extra products for me. The first one, send me a guest list by your due date. Send me a guest list of 45 names. $200 in outside orders before your show. Have 15 buying guests at your show. Gather a total of 20 orders. And then get three bookings. And then if they are these, there's a gift for each one. So the top ones are very little things. Pair knives, citrus peeler, you know, things like that. The last one, if they get three bookings, cooking shows, booked. That third cooking show, I give them $15 to go shopping with. You're probably like, what? I get my host to help me book shows. And so I get a lot of bookings from people that aren't at their show because they can talk to them and talk them into having shows. You've got to use your host. The next sheet, I don't use the cooking show planning guide that we get from the company. The reason I don't use that is because it tells them to create a guest list in there and I don't want it in there. I want it to be email format back to me so I can go real quick and do the things. So I put in this one. It's where they create their wish list. And then the last one is the host special. And I do colored copies so that um, I can say when I'm on the phone. So I'm on that white piece of paper on your left hand side with the colorful box. And I say, this is just a letter for me with some tips to remind you about how to have a successful show. And I just remind them, okay, remember, we want 15 people there, $200 in outside order to get a free gift for me. I do make that one a little bigger item. Um, right now on Outlet, unless they just changed it, there's a cookbook. It's a retired one, $3.75. You make way more than that on $200 worth of orders. So they get a free cookbook. Um, and then I talk about the business page. I say, I don't know if this is something you've ever thought about, but I just wanted to kind of talk with you a little bit about the business. And if you're interested, we can make this show your kickoff show. And then I tell them, you know, about, I've already gone over the free stuff. I tell them, create your wish list so that you'll kind of have an idea of what you want. But I will promise you when I come to your show, it will change because I tell them that all the time and I've always done. And then I go over the host special, especially if it's one of those months where you've got to sell $650. So you may say, I know, Amanda, you said that you really want that deep cover baker. We're going to get it for you, but I want you to get it for $34. So I need you to have $650 in orders. But if you listen to me, you'll meet it, well above it. So you want $200 before I get there. You want 15 people there. And I said, the worst thing that can happen is we don't need it, we get it for you for half price. That's the two options. So I'll pass this around so that you can see it. And Anita, I can send you all these templates if you want to board them out. Okay? Yay! And you only get boarded if you're here. So. Alright. So. <laughs> Alright. Perfect. And then, um, I also send them directions on how to have their friends order online. Now, I will tell you, sometimes when you go in and you go to your website and you click shop online and then enter the host name, it can get a little confusing. So I'm going to give you one little tip. Once you set a show up online, if you go to your website, click shop online, type in the host name, then their name pops up in blue, click it, and then copy the web link after you click it. That is a direct link to their show. And they don't have to do all those steps. Do you want me to repeat that again? Okay. All right. So set their show up on your website. Go to your website and click shop online. Enter the host name. So you're doing the same steps you tell them to do. When their name pops up, click it and then copy the web link, and I send that web link to my host. I have, that's awesome, and in addition to that, I don't know if this helps, but I have started in, on my web page, under stories or notes, like for my fundraisers, I put a note how to order for this fundraiser, yeah. Yeah. and it has those directions right. listed under there, so yeah. that helps too. Yeah. And that's just, but that's what I do because the direct links help more because I can't tell you how many orders have been placed on paperchef.com or yeah. Hannah's website and they didn't enter the host. And I can't go get those orders and give the host credit. So I do send them that direct link. If I set up a Facebook event for their show, that link is all over the Facebook page. So all they have to do is click that. Hannah, can you repeat that one more time, please? Yes. So set their show up. Okay. 
Go to your website and click Shop Online. Enter the host name, as if you're going to order. And then it's going to pop up in blue, so you click their name. And then copy the link up at the top. Sometimes you have to give it some time. Okay. That's, yeah. Well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut my whole computer and I'm going to slow back up. And then it'll find me. You can. Yeah. I, I have this in my mind. There's not a way to log out. There's not a log out button on that. There's not. All right. Step three. Call your host to review the show package. Right? Your host is not going to read everything that happens. So I have to summarize it for them. Now, if I have a host tell me, you will never get me on the phone. Then I do have an email that I send, but I do my host packets by phone. Um, and it takes me, I can do my host packets in about five minutes. It really is not a long phone call. So I just tell them I need just five minutes of your time, and I kind of just paraphrase the whole host packet for them. Step four, about a week prior to the show, let me go back one second. The host packets, I get out as soon as I get a guest list. Because I want them getting orders as soon as they can. So send the host packet as soon as you have a list. Because I find if I get a guest list, the only reason they cancel is due to like really extreme circumstances, which we don't ever wish on any host. But those are the only reasons I usually get cancellations on that list. So then step four, about a week prior to the show, I email recipe choices. And I know some of you put those in your host packets. I do not because I look at this as one more way I can keep in touch with my host. And I find this is the email they're waiting on. Um, they're so excited. Half of them email me before time and say, are you going to email me about the recipe choices? I said, yeah, I'm so much going to do that the week before, but let's go ahead and talk about it now. Um, so, um, and the reason I did, I won't tell you that, my friend. Um, well, I'll go down because I said it. The reason I do that is because our newsletters go out at the beginning of the month. And I had a host open my newsletter and buy all the ingredients for the recipe in my newsletter. And not for the recipe choices we discussed. Now, I winged it. I made a totally different recipe with the ingredients she bought. Use my magic. <laughs> uh, but the re that's the, re the reason I do that is I email about a week prior so that if my newsletter has gone out, then we'll speak to it. So, just a funny story. So, we wing it and make it near work. So, I email about a week before, remind, telling her to remind the guests $200 in outside work. I do all those reminders again. And we discuss recipe choices. And I give my host three to four to choose from and let her pick from those. And now I will tell you, I can count on my hands and my toes how many times I've been asked, can we do the top ready? Yeah. No. <laughs> so what do I say when I hear that question? The taco ring is a great recipe. If you want to make it prior to the show, that's great. But I don't make that at my show only because my goal is to show you how to make dinner in 30 minutes or less. And I know that's a quick recipe. But folding crescent rolls takes a lot of time. Um, so I have hosts that make it before the show, but I do not make rings at my show. But that's a, you know, you have to decide what works for you. Um, okay, so then I call the host, step five, I call my host three to four days prior to the show to review what they'll need to do before I get there, which is just buy the ingredients. Make sure they have a standard size. And if they don't, I take mine. Now, and I'm sure, like, people laugh at me all the time when I show up with my group. What else do you have in your car? Um, but I do. I went to a show. They told me they had a standard size microwave. Got there, it was dorm size. I went to Walmart and bought a microwave because Walmart was right beside our house. And it was the best investment because now I can say, well, do you have anywhere I can sit mine? That's all I said. Do you have somewhere I can sit mine? And that way I can still do my magic pot show if that's what they want. Or if they wanted a grill pan show, we can switch or I just do a grill pan show. But I do have a microwave. The tax write obligation. Um, so that I can carry that big old thing everywhere I go. Um, and then I tell them again when I will arrive. Because I go to my shows 45 minutes early. OC. So I have to be set up ready to go. And I figure out how many guests they're going to have. Because the worst thing I could do is call. I take 20 catalogs to my show. But if I call Holly and Holly says I have 25 people coming, I take 30. So I want to make sure that I have enough of everything. 
How many guests do you think you have coming? And then it's showtime. So um, I'm going to see. Do any of you have questions on what I've covered so far? I'm going to come back up again in a little bit, but questions about what I've covered so far. So can you still send out the postcard invitations for your host? I do postcard invites, not the mini catalogs. Now I know a lot of you have great success with the mini catalogs. The postcards have worked for me, and my goal is to try and keep my expenses as low as possible, and those are cheaper. So you don't use the email invitation at all. I mean, you know, I've gotten to the habit of just sending out an email invitation to my host for her to send out to uh, her guests. I used to sell put a these email postcards when I first started, but I stopped that. Okay. So you've always done the my goal for my hosts is to send me an email and let me do Facebook. That's my goal. And the reason I like those are because if I send email invitations, I know they're getting reminders because it sends out from our website three days prior to the show. Also, if I can set it up on Facebook, I do not want them to set the, the Facebook event because I want to be the admin so I can put as many comments out there as possible and everybody will see it. Um, so don't let your host set up the Facebook events. Do it and have her do the inviting. Um, but that's my goal is for them to do those. But I do still, you know, there's a lot of people out there that do not have email. So I usually get a little bit of mix. They'll send me a few addresses, a few this, a few that. Um, but the other thing I find too with a Facebook event is they'll invite people that weren't on the guest list. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I know you said you booked far in advance, but for some of us who book like two weeks ahead, and that's kind of crunch time to get invitations out and all that. A week out, I'm afraid to just email on Facebook for that, yeah. And that's a good point, too. I do plan my life way in advance because I'm already, I'm going to be in the next week already booked in January. Um, but we just talk about, and that doesn't mean November and December are all the way done, but I start, when people start asking me, I go ahead and get my calendar where I want it. So are there times that someone calls and says, okay, you know, we're doing a birthday party Friday night. Okay, you can go to a birthday party or go make them. So there are nights, and I'm not telling you Miss Granny's 80th, 5th birthday, but you generally know that stuff in advance. So there are nights where people will call and say, we want to go out to eat, or there's this party. But at the end of the day, I am happier that I did the show and missed out on that little bit of friend time, only because I need my business to provide for my family. So I'm not saying miss those big events, but I'm saying don't cancel a show just to go have dinner with a friend. Not that you would do that, but there are times where I have missed things because I have a show, because I do plan my life so far in advance. Um, but about three months. We have to do that for my husband's job, too. So. Question? You're kind of going on with this, and I know Vicki has asked me this one. Okay, go ahead. She has booked hers in advance, too, but then she feels like she starts to get cold feet, and I know you said you contact them like every week, but if it's not time for the invitation list, I mean, do you do anything else? Okay, like, good. So if you were to call me today and book a January show, I still want your guest list in two weeks. So I do still go ahead and get the guest list. And then I find, you know, if they're on Facebook, we can go ahead and set up the event so we can just put out reminders every now and then and they know that people are excited about it. Um, and then even if you just say, you know, hey, Jenny, I'm so excited about your show. I know we're a couple months away, but I just wanted to email you. I've also attached a recipe for you. Just so that there's something, you know, or hey, Jenny, I had you on my mind. I was just thinking about my January shows and just wanted to send you a recipe and let you know I'm so excited. Thank you. You said you take 20 catalogs. Like, do you give them just a catalog? Do you give them the host specials? Do you give them a the receipt? What do you do? I take catalogs with the order form in them. Okay. Yeah. So it's not in a folder or in all this stuff? Simple. Yeah. Do you put the guest special in there as well? I do. Okay. And I know some people do the lot boards and have those in there. I try to keep, again, my expenses as low as possible, so I don't run the copies. I have a copy of the guest special with me. Like, the months we have pink products, I pass a copy of it around, and that has worked. And I also have a copy to check out, but I don't have a copy of each I take one of those tabletop display, the mm -hmm. clear yeah. ones. I slide yeah. the host special in there, put it on the coffee table yeah. next to the catalog, and then put it on the checkout table. Back to the calendar. Okay. That's okay. Go ahead. What time do you start and what time do you end? Over my shifts. Okay. Three calls a day. Oh, you're fine. Okay. 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 Okay.
that I'm My phone calls. calls. Okay. Yes. Um, so I will tell you if it's a night that I don't have a show, I will start phone calls at 8 o'clock after I put my daughter to bed. Mm -hmm. I do not call anybody's house after 9. So you're probably going, that's only an hour. But before I go in my office, I've made a list of who I'm calling that night. Because if I didn't, I would spend 30 minutes trying to figure out who the heck am I supposed to call. So that's another thing is a to-do list. And I have a piece of paper, well it's a notepad in my office, but Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it lists like the days of the week and it's right there. So every day I wrote down who I need to call and so when I go in, that's my checklist for each day. And I am telling you I look by that thing. If I didn't have it, I wouldn't be. Um, and I, I gave my team one too and told them, put this on your desk. Lay out what you need to do each day. So I do, but it's, what's today? Saturday. So I've already, you know, while I'm in my office Saturday, which I usually am in my office on weekends, I'll go ahead and write down what I need to do tomorrow before I walk out. So that I go when I And someone asked about the guest special, and it just don't want to be so I'm going to share this really quick, and then we'll go into show notes. But um, when you're at your shows, use your guest specials to help get sales. Because if you announce those and say, if you spend $75 tonight, you can pick a cookbook for free. $8 to $15 cookbook for free. You will be surprised how many people spend $75 just for that cookbook. Or if they'll come up, and let's say, you know, they're at $63. I'm like, you know, less than $15 you are with and getting that. And this cookbook is $15. Half the time, they'll add a $20 item and go over what they need to spend. So that's another way that I really increase sales, too, is pushing that guest special. And even if they're a dollar away, you'll be surprised how many will order a $10 item. So. We're doing door fresh. Yes, we are. Okay.